scrutiny and it feels like an important moment but it's modest at the beginning anyway. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, uh, pharmacists will say most people live within 20 minutes of their local chemist, so it makes sense to use them more. Uh, good morning. There has been this campaign to get pharmacies involved in the big vaccine rollout. The question, though, is how involved? So pharmacies are unusual in the sense that they get some NHS funding for services, but fundamentally they are small businesses. There are more than 11,000 community pharmacies in England widely offering services like the flu jab and they'd like to play a much bigger part in the coronavirus vaccine rollout. Now it's important to say that they don't make any money from giving the vaccine, that's part of their public health role, but in order to be able to deliver them they need to survive as businesses and last year, well, more than 400 of them closed. Now lots of them have had to reduce staffing levels and in some cases owners have had to pump their own money in to keep the business going and as Charlie was saying from today six large pharmacies will begin offering jabs and then over the next fortnights another 200 or so will be signed up but that is nowhere near the total number of community sites who say they are ready and willing to take part Anit Kapoor runs pharmacies in Greater Manchester and he says it makes sense because it will help support those businesses but more importantly it will see more people vaccinated sooner so at the moment, the rules mean that pharmacies can only take part if they can deliver a thousand jabs a week, which is something uh, that smaller sites can't do. So the National Pharmacy Association wants those rules relaxed because for now it means that just the big players get to benefit and it doesn't get much bigger than boots when it comes to chemists. I will be talking to the boss at around half past eight this morning. I mean, lots of people watching will be picturing their local pharmacy and thinking, how will it work logistically? Physically. They're quite small. So being able to socially distance is really important there. But pharmacies say, look, we're experienced in this. We've rolled out the flu jab every year. Let us play a part in this. Graham, um, Graham Satchel is going to be um, showing us kind of how it might work. He's in a pharmacy for us as well this yeah, morning. Yeah, because there's also, I think you have your jab and then you have to be you left alone. You have to be put for 15 minutes, minutes yeah. somewhere, don't you? Yeah. So it's not as easy as it sounds. Nina, thanks. Thank you. Look, Nina, it, it, we were looking around there with Graham, and that is a, they've got a lot of floor Big. space there, haven't they? Yeah, we've had lots of emails actually this morning from some viewers saying that just wouldn't work in the pharmacy that I'm picturing in my head. So not practical everywhere. Good morning. But yeah, Boots, Asda, Superdrug, they've all signed up to help deliver vaccines at some of their larger sites over the next two weeks. As we've been hearing, there are calls for smaller community sites to be able to offer jabs too. But logistically, well, that's quite tough. Let's speak to the boss of Boots, practicality. We saw Derek and Irene sitting in a big open space there. Alan even had time to do a Sudoku, but it worked don't work in every pharmacy, will it? How will you decide where you want these vaccinations to be? That's one of the reasons it's quite complicated. The second thing is that... Some pharmacists want this to happen. Is Many of them have had a very difficult year. You said goodbye to 4,000 members of staff, 11.5% uh, drop in overall sales in the last quarter that was announced. How much do you yes. need this as part of the business model? viewers who got in touch to say he was picturing his local pharmacy, those long corridors with lots of items on the shelves, potentially mixing with customers as well. He's not certain it can be COVID safe. Another challenge for your staff at the moment, the launch of the Ask for Annie campaign. So Annie being a code word for vis victims of domestic violence, male and female, who yes. can come into store and a safe space is created to link them up with police confidentially. Practically speaking, how would that work if somebody walked in with their abuser, for example, and how do you train staff for something so delicate? They'll have faced abuse, verbal, sometimes physical, around trying to enforce COVID secure measures. Is that something that boot staff have had to deal with? Um, don't just turn up at your pharmacy and ask for this vaccine. It's being rolled out gradually, possibly with more than the 200 that we're expecting over the next fortnight. But wait for that letter or that text message and book your spot there. Don't just turn up. Indeed. OK, Nina, thanks so much.